COVID shook the world and most businesses took revenue and cash flow hit and the ones who survived are looking to improve their cash flow. In the last six months, I've worked with 90 such businesses to implement cash flow improvement strategies. I'm sharing seven such proven strategies with you today. You'll see your cash flow improve even if you implement one of these strategies. Hi, I'm Cecil. I'm a financial transformation coach for female entrepreneurs who want to scale the business fast. If you want to solve your cash flow problems and improve your cash flow confidence, then don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell right now so that you do not miss out on future new videos. The strategies that I'm going to share with you today are based on my work experience working with 19 clients in the last six months, as well as from my experience over the years as a financial coach has been ambitious entrepreneurs like you running businesses from 40,000 to 40 million pounds in revenue. So let's dive in. Strategy number one, sell your knowledge and experience. You can't go out and do things right now or you're limited in that aspect doesn't mean that you can't sell. You can sell your knowledge and share your insight through your experience you've gained over the years by turning into an online course, one-to-one -one mentoring or group coaching. If you are a fitness coach, you no longer have to serve your client in person. You can package your knowledge in a self-study course that your client can watch and follow in their own time. You can also train how to become a fitness coach. Joe Wicks, also known as the Body Coach, began PE with Joe on YouTube, trying to help children to stay active during the pandemic lockdown. It was only successful, but P with Joe took his brands to the next level and was awarded Guinness World of Records because of his live stream on YouTube for most viewers above 950,000 viewers on his second live stream on 24th March 2020. Someone focused on turning the tide can create bigger cash flow than the pre-pandemic situation by creating multiple streams of income. It can be a mixture of consulting, coaching, or on-demand programs. Strategy number two, focus on your most profitable products. Do a deep dive in your business and look at multiple products or services that are bringing cash in. You'll notice that not all products are profitable or highly profitable. For example, you could be selling 100 units for $10, that's $1,000. Or you could be selling 100 units per $100, that's $10,000. Obviously, you want to concentrate on most profitable products that are bringing cash in with less time and energy spent, and that's crucial. But that is only the part of the equation. Also, look at the cost of fulfillment. What is costing you to fulfill your promise to your customer? So, look at the cash in and out by product, and you'll find out which one has the most cash left by product after the cost of fulfillment is taken care of. And then you'll know which one is your most profitable product and you will be able to focus on that product going forward. Strategy number three, go 100% online. This is for brick and mortar business, the ones operating completely offline or offline online hybrid model. Most of the business that I came across were operating on hybrid model. And one thing pandemic has taught is anyone can adapt because desperate time brings desperate measures. Now those businesses that were operating out in office are fully operated online. For example, one of my clients, a marketing agency in West London, had an office with 10 employees. After the pandemic, they cancelled the office lease and fully went online and they started to communicate and collaborate with 10 employees and 18 to 20 freelancers through Slack and Trello. They also do their accounts and admin work online. And in this process, they are saving a lot on overhead expenses. Now, they don't have to pay rent. In addition to this, they don't have to pay extra social security costs because they are hiring more freelancers than employees, which means that they make savings on that. So this has helped to improve the cash flow in the last two, three months. You can also do the same in your business. Strategy number four, improve customer trust with milestone payments. Nowadays, people are more skeptical 
about spending their money. They want certainty. They want to get things done as expected. So rather than saying, I'll give you X number of hours, how about you say, you pay me X amount when you reach milestone A, and you pay me Y amount when you reach milestone B, and so on. This way you can offer more certainty to your customers and they will be happy to pay you. This way you not only improve your cash flow but also improve customer trust in you because you've been able to deliver transformation and solve your customers' problems. So milestone payments work great to improve cash flow at times like this where we're experiencing right now. Strategy number five, move clients from rolling contracts to retainer fees. Instead of working with clients on a monthly rolling contract, work on a retainer basis. In the case of monthly rolling contract, there is no absolute no certainty of whether the client will stay with you for the next month or so. That will have an effect on your cash flow possibly, whereas there is certainty in the case of monthly retainer. So you provide the solution to your customer and you tell them that you're going to provide A, B, C, D, E and you can move them from monthly rolling contract to monthly retrainer and that will improve your cash flow with certainty. When you have certainty of cash coming in in your business, then you can invest that cash to grow your business. You can bring in extra pair of hands, run marketing campaigns. You can only do this when you have certainty of cash coming in by retainer fees as opposed to monthly rolling contract where there's absolutely no certainty that the client will stay with you for the next month or so so with new financial confidence and ongoing cash coming in as a retainer from your customers then you can invest in business growth and compound the value of your business strategy number six offer third-party financing Let's say you sell $5,000 of $10,000 program. So it's pretty hard for your customers to pay $5,000 in advance. Now you can say, I can offer you three months or four months payment plan. So in the payment plan, the cost is a little bit higher, normally 20% more compared to the normal price. Otherwise, there is no incentive for your customers to pay you upfront in full. So you can work with financing companies. So in this case, your customers will pay the financing companies in full over 12 months or 24 months contract. It works really well for your customers because they're paying over 12 months or 24 months term without paying interest to be in your program. For them, it's no brainer. And for you, the finance companies pay you straight away. The only catch is they're going to deduct anything up to 20% of the investment value. Now the question is, would you want to possibly lose a customer or collect 20% less cash? From my own experience being a buyer as well as seller, it works really, really well. I remember when I was training to become a professional speaker, I had to pay financing companies over 36 months, but without paying for interest or any additional cost. And it was a no brainer for me. From a trainer point of view, they got paid straight away minus charges. So they were able to improve the cash flow straight away strategy number seven get help from a financial expert it takes money to make more money by having extra pair of eyes if you can improve your cash flow tenfold would you do that who wouldn't it's like you invest five hundred dollars and you get five thousand dollars back but even if you don't get cash flow improvements in terms of tenfold but are like marginals like ten percent or twenty percent you should still take it because if you don't, you're simply leaving cash on the table. You need to understand the difference between cost and investment. That's crucial. Even on a smaller revenue base like $50,000, a 20% growth means $10,000. And that is only possible if an experience, I look at those numbers and make some adjustments to it. Even after allowing for taking care of financial advice investment, you still walk away with $6,000, $7,000 extra than if you hadn't taken the financial advice in the first place. As an entrepreneur and a financial coach, I've invested a lot in my personal as well as business growth and never see them as a cost. Why would I want to buy a cost? I want to make an investment and that's my advice to you. So make an investment, don't buy a cost. If you're not sure about the difference between two, then bring in someone who can explain this to you well. 
They do have seven proven cash flow improvement strategies that are working right now. Here's a quick recap. Strategy number one, sell your knowledge and experience. Strategy number two, focus on your most profitable product. Strategy number three, go 100% online. Strategy number four, improve customer trust with milestone payments. Strategy number five, move clients from rolling contract to retainer fees. Strategy number six, offer third party financing and strategy number seven is get help from financial expert if you got value from this video then like it and share it don't forget to subscribe and hit on the notification bell right now so that you do not miss out on future new videos which i publish every tuesday at 4 pm gmt your comments are my oxygen so don't forget to comment below i respond to them all now i would like to turn it over to you let me know which cash flow improvement strategies that you have already implemented in your business and which ones you haven't or do you have any more strategies that you want to share let me know by leaving a comment below